previous last year when my archaeology of Hindu Sumatra was published, many friends in England and America wrote to me how beautiful were the photos and how tiresome the text and some urged me to you to write a popular book on the same subject. Now I must confess that nothing is more unpleasant than to write a book. It is wonderful to wander through the jungle in rain and in sunshine, to love and play with primitive, friendly people, to bathe in the foaming waters of a cool mountain stream, or to watch the sun setting in a sea of scarlet behind the vast, silent mountains. It is glorious to dig for hours in a canoe among bridges and ferns, to play tune on a bamboo flute, or to watch the graceful movement, movements of fish in the clear water. It is something one never it is something one never forgets. The song of mysterious birds singing in the fathomless jungles of Kampar, the red orchids blooming on lonely hillsides, and the moon sailing out like a silver boat on the fast blue on the of the evening evening sky. But it is terrible to write a book. And yet an island there is always kind and hospitable places. One under obligation, one under obligations. So I take up my pen once more. This book gives a few side likes, side likes on the wilderness of Sumatra, with its attractive people and remarkable animals, with its ancient, very civilizations and forgotten kingdoms, the tra the tragic ruins of which lie buried on the jungle. It tells something about Hindu antiquities continues with the megaliths of Nias and some museums and some Musir and next with the historic mon monuments. Here and there is touches on legends, folk tales and ethnological details. In this way, attention is called to problems which may have been neglected in the systematic descriptions, descriptions such as the well-known book of Prof. Lop. It seemed to me a good idea to devote a few chapters to people who deserve more recognition that than had than has been given them by history in the jungle the foot in the jungle footsteps are obliterated by every sour the woods are full of our non graves and that is why I hope these people will continue to live in the following pages. Moreover, I could not resist the temptation to tell something about the life of the elephants since reliable information on this subject is very scarce. In writing, in writing this book, many people have been helpful me. Dr. G. S. Maslin and M. A. Bowman have contributed valuable information, of which I have gratefully made use. They gave they gave such hearty cooperation during the exploration of the battlelands and Aeneas that without their help, this book would never have been written. To Dr. P. Forover also. I express my hearty thanks. I also received help from Mr. A. A. W. Bokma, Guru Ponet, G. A. Boslar, and J. De Bruyne, F. H. Days, Dr. A. Von Dognik, S. Iman, Dr. H. G. Friedrich, Friedrich, Professor Ag Hai, Professor Ag Heiner Gelden, W. Hutagalum, W. M. S. B. Kluster, Professor Wilhelm Kopex, S. Kotleven, Dr. V. E. Korn, G. C. Lemster, H. E. Delum, Dr. E. P. Dr. E. P. Plug by S. H. Bruce, M. J. Rui Chaffer, Chel Tichelman, who wrote Chapter 9, G. J. Westring, and T. G. Wustra. Dr. C. von Fuhrer Heimendorf was kind enough to contribute a free review of the Naga megaliths in Assam, for which the reader may observe how very much they resemble those of, of Nias and Sumatra. I hope to go more deeply into this subject in another book. In conclusion, I wish to thank the Royal Netherlands Geographical Society, which has given financial support to my explorations. Professor G. P. Clywick, this one, chairman of this society, did pioneer work 30 years ago in his anthropological studies in Nias. His approval has been the greatest reward 
for my work. Leiden, October 1938.